So in this example, we're going to look at how to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors pop up a lot, especially in signal processing applications. In this little video, we're just going to work on the mechanics of how you compute these for a matrix. So we're going to work with the matrix A. The matrix A is 4, 6, 10, 3, 10, 13, minus 2, minus 6, minus 8. So this is the matrix we're going to be working with. And we're going to first compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A. And we denote the eigenvalues as lambda sub i. That's the notation that's commonly used for eigenvalues, is to note each one is a lambda value. Since we're working with a 3 by 3 matrix, we will have eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. And we know that lambda i's, all these eigenvalues that we want to compute, are the roots of what we call the characteristic equation of the matrix which is the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. So if we can compute the determinant of this quantity, set it equal to zero, and find these roots, then we will have found the eigenvalues of the matrix. And this equation right here that I've just boxed in, this is the equation that you can use for any n by n matrix. This is the general equation that you need to solve. So we need to compute this specifically for the example we're working, the determinant of a minus lambda i. So here's our matrix A. Here is lambda times the identity matrix I. And then you see we're using the lines to indicate the determinant. That's common notation. Instead of spelling out DET, you put vertical lines around the matrix, and that means take the determinant. So after we take 4, 6, 10, our matrix A, and subtract off the identity matrix times I, we have this, which simplifies to 4 minus lambda, 6, 10, 3, and then 10 minus lambda in the diagonal, second diagonal element there, and then minus 2, minus 6, and minus 8 minus lambda because we're subtracting off a lambda from minus 8. So we needed to compute the determinant of this matrix. So let's just recopy that down right here. So to compute the determinant, we do the cofactor expansion. So I'm going to have the quantity 4 minus lambda times this 2 by 2 determinant, which comes from the lower 2 by 2 entries of the original matrix minus 6 times this other 2 by 2 matrix, and then plus 10 times this other 2 by 2 determinant, which comes from the kind of lower left-hand 2 by 2 matrix of the original matrix. So this is just kind of standard cofactor expansion, and we've now simplified this 3 by 3 determinant into doing 3 2 by 2 determinants. So we can go ahead and write these out and expand them because we know the rules for doing 2 by 2 determinants, it's going to be 10 minus lambda times quantity minus 8 minus lambda minus the other cross terms multiplied 13 times a negative 6, so that's one term. And then we'll do the exact same expansion for the second determinant. We'll have 3 times quantity minus 8 minus lambda minus 13 times a negative 2, and then plus 10 times 3 times a negative 6 minus the other cross terms. So really what we have here are three different terms that I'm going to label 1, 2, 3, and we need to add all these together, but we're going to attack them kind of one piece at a time to simplify the algebra. So let's go ahead and work on the first term. Here's the first term. It's 4 minus lambda, and if I start multiplying these things out, 10 times negative 8 is negative 80, 10 times a negative lambda is minus, minus 10 lambda, then the other cross terms are negative 8 times negative lambda, which gives you 8 lambda, and then a negative lambda times a negative lambda gives you lambda squared, and so on. So if I do all those, and then 13 times 6 is 78, I get this, which I can simplify a little bit. Negative 80 plus 78 gives me negative 2, and then I have a negative 10 lambda and an 8 lambda sitting there, so that's minus 2 lambda, and then the lambda squared stays by itself. I can't simplify that at all. And then I'll go ahead and multiply and distribute all of this. So I'm just going to distribute each of these things. 4 times a negative 2 is negative 8. 4 times a negative 2 lambda is negative 8 lambda. 4 times lambda squared is 4 lambda squared. And then similarly distribute the minus lambda across everything. So we have six terms. And we can go ahead and combine all those. And we get minus lambda cubed plus 6 lambda squared minus 6 lambda minus 8. So this is an expression for term 1 which is just one of the three terms that we need. We'll do similar work on the other ones. These are a little bit simpler. They don't have quite as many terms. So minus 6, then I expanded that. 26 minus 24 is 2, so we end up with 2 minus 3 lambda. Then if I go ahead and distribute the minus 6, I get negative 12 plus 18 lambda. So here's a simplified expression for term 2. 
And then finally, term three, same type of just distribution of the multiplication and just algebraic simplification gives us a simplified expression of 20 minus 20 lambda. So what we have done here is we've computed each part of this determinant expression. I now know that the determinant of a minus lambda i is term 1 plus term 2 plus term 3. And I have nice simplified expressions for each of these. This is term 1, this is term 2, and this is term 3. So now I just have some more algebra to do. And if I combine like terms, I end up with minus lambda cubed plus 6 lambda squared minus 8 lambda. Notice the only lambda terms I have are 18 lambda and minus 20 lambda and this minus 6 lambda. So if you add all that up, that turns into minus 8 lambda. And then the only constant terms are minus 8 minus 12, which is minus 20. But then there's a plus 20, so that gives you 0, so that's why it's plus 0. So we've done what we needed to do. We've computed this deterministic, or I'm sorry, this characteristic equation. And then what we do is we set it equal to 0. And this is now a third order polynomial in lambda that I need to solve for the roots, because this will give me the eigenvalues. So really what we have here is the equation lambda cubed minus 6 lambda squared plus 8 lambda is 0. And I can factor that. I can factor out a lambda to give me lambda times quantity lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 8. And now I can go ahead and see one of the eigenvalues pretty easily. I can see that for the value of lambda equals 0, I have 0 equals 0. So lambda 1 equal to 0 is one of my eigenvalues. And then the other two eigenvalues, I come from solving this quadratic equation, second order polynomial, which I can do with the quadratic equation minus b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. If I just plug in the specifics for our problem here, b is a negative 6, so a negative negative 6 is a positive 6. b squared is 36 minus 4 times 1 times 8 over 2 times 1. So now I'm just doing some simple algebra. 4 times 1 times 8 is 32, so inside the root I have 36 minus 32, which is 4. So this is really 6 plus or minus 2 over 2. So when you do minus, you have 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. So one of the roots is lambda 2 equal 2. And then the other term will be when we add 2. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 over 2 is 4. So the other eigenvalue is lambda 3 equal to 4. So we've now solved for the three eigenvalues. Lambda 1 is 0, lambda 2 is 2, and lambda 3 is 4. Let's go ahead and compute the eigenvectors associated with each of these eigenvalues. The eigenvectors we denote v sub i. Since we're working with a 3 by 3 matrix, we will have v1, v2, and v3. And remember, to compute the eigenvectors, each eigenvector is just the null space of a minus lambda i times the identity matrix. So we're going to be evaluating this for each eigenvalue for little i equals 1, 2, and 3. So let's go ahead and compute v1. For v1, the corresponding eigenvalue is lambda 1 equals to 0. So I actually need to solve the equation a minus lambda 1 times the identity which is equal to a minus 0 times the identity, because my eigenvalue was 0, which is just equal to a. So I need to find the null space of a, and this will tell me what v1 is. So to find the null space of a, I write down the matrix a, and I augment it with zeros. And now I'm just going to do row manipulations to solve this system of linear equations. So the first thing I'll do is I'll let e3, equation 3, equal 2 times e3, plus equation 1. So if you do that, this simplifies to this system of linear equations now. I've modified equation 3. Equations 1 and 2 have stayed the same, but I have reduced it a little bit to this form. And then let's go ahead and do another manipulation. Let's let equation 1 equal 1 fourth of equation 1. So everything in that first equation is going to get divided by 4. The equations 2 and 3 will stay the same. And then let's do another manipulation. Let's let e2 equal e2 minus 3 e1. So here, equation 1 will stay the same. Equation 2 is going to change to this, because it's now equal to e2 minus 3 e1. And then e3 will remain unchanged, because I haven't done any manipulations on equation 3. And finally, let's let e2 equal 2 elevenths of e2. So we're just going to multiply it by a scalar. And we'll do the same thing for E3. We'll take E3 and negate it and divide by 6. So equation 1 will remain unchanged. E2 is going to turn into 0, 1, 1, because I multiplied everything by 2 elevenths. So 2 elevenths cancel with 11 halves. 
and similarly for E3. I'm going to divide everything by a negative 6, so the negative 6s turn into positive 1s when I do the division. And then finally, let's let E3 equals E3 minus E2. So now the first two equations will remain unchanged, but now I'm going to get a row of zeros here for my last equation. So I have simplified my system of linear equations as much as possible by doing row operations. And now looking at this, I can go ahead and write down the solution. Z is obviously equal to any value that we'd like. It's a free variable because the last row is all zeros. By looking at the second equation, we see that y needs to equal a negative z. And then looking at the first equation, we see that x plus 3 halves y plus 5 halves z has to equal 0. If I solve for x, that means that x has to equal a negative 3 halves y minus 5 halves z just by moving to the other side. And now if we plug in the relationship for how y and z are related, we can simplify this. We know that y has to equal a negative z, so if I replace y with negative z, my minus 3 halves y turns into 3 halves z, and now I just have z's. 3 halves z minus 5 halves z is equal to a negative z. So I've now solved this system of linear equations. z can be any number, y has to be a negative of that number, and x also has to be a negative of that number. So since z is a free variable, I'm just going to pick a specific value for it. I'm going to let z equal 1, and now I can construct my eigenvector. The eigenvector v1 is going to have a 1 for the z coordinate. x has to equal negative 1 because x must equal negative z. And similarly, y must equal a negative 1 because y also has to equal a negative z. So this is my eigenvector v1. We can now do similar things for v2. I need to compute a minus lambda 2i. Lambda 2 is equal to 2, so I have a minus 2i. I plug this in to my equation. We'll go through this one a little bit faster. It's just algebra. You can slow it down if you need to to check the steps. But we're just evaluating this matrix, so we now have the matrix a minus 2i. And what, I, what do I need to do to find the eigenvector v2? Again, I just have to find the null space of this vector. So we set up our system of linear equations to be equal to zeros. And then I will do row operations until I manipulate it to where I can solve this system of linear equations. So I'm going to let E3 equal E1 plus E3. I'm going to add those two together. So equation 1 remains unchanged. Equation 2 remains unchanged. E3 is equal to the sum of E1 and E3, so it turns into zeros. The next manipulation I'll do is I'll let E1 equal 1 half E1. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. Equation 2 remains unchanged and equation 3 remains unchanged. And now I can go ahead and subtract, let E2 equal E2 minus 3E1. So E1 will remain unchanged, but E2 turns into this, and E3 remains unchanged. And now I can go ahead and look at this and write down my solution. Again, since I have all zeros in my third row, Z can be anything. From the second equation, we have that minus Y minus 2Z has to equal 0. So solving for Y, I get Y must equal a negative 2Z. And then from the first equation, we have x plus 3y plus 5z has to equal 0. So solving for x, we get minus 3y, but y is equal to a negative 2z. So I get x is equal to a negative 3 times a negative 2z minus 5z, which simplifies to z. So we now have a nice solution. z can be any number. y has to equal a negative 2 times that number. And x has to equal that number z. So now I'll just pick a number for z. I'm free to choose anything that I want. I'll let z equal 1, and now I can construct v2. If z is 1, then the third coordinate of v2 has to be equal 1. The second coordinate, y, has to be equal to a negative 2 times that, so I get a negative 2. And the first coordinate has to be equal to z, so I get 1. So here's my third eigenvector. If we wanted to, we could even check. We could take a times this, and what you'll get out if you do the computations is you get 2, a negative 4, 2, which is equal to 2 times my starting vector. So this is just the definition of the eigenvector. When I put my eigenvector into my matrix A, I get out that eigenvector scaled by the value of the eigenvalue. So we now have V2, and finally let's compute V3, so the same approach. I have to compute a minus lambda 3 times the identity matrix, which is equal to this matrix, and now I have to find the null space of this matrix, and that will give me v3. So I set up my system of linear equations to solve for the null space. I start doing my manipulations to solve this system of linear equations. The next operation I'll do is e2 is e2 minus 3e1. 
E1 remains unchanged, E2 changes to this, E3 remains unchanged. I'll let E3 equals E3 plus 2E2, so E1 remains unchanged, E2 remains unchanged. E3, we get all zeros, and now we're back in the similar situation. Z can be any number. From the second equation, I have minus 3Y minus 5Z equals 0, so I solve for Y to, to get Y in terms of Z. And from the first equation, I can solve for X in terms of Z, which simplifies to minus Z. So again, I'm free to choose any value for Z. The general solution is Z is any number, Y is a negative 5 thirds Z, and X is a negative Z. So I could just let Z equal 1, just like I have been, but I'm going to try to make my answer just look a little nicer. I'm going to choose Z equals 3. So when I construct V3, Z has to equal 3. Y will be a negative 5 because Y is equal to minus 5 thirds Z. The third and the Z equals 3 cancel, so you get minus 5. And then since X has to equal a negative Z, the first coordinate has to be a negative 3. And again, if I wanted to, I could check. I could check that A times this vector, if you do the math, it comes out to minus 12, minus 20, 12, which is equal to 4 times my starting vector. So this is just the definition of the eigenvector. What I put in for A to operate on is what comes out scaled by the eigenvalue. And that concludes our little example of how to compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. Eigenvalues are always roots of that characteristic equation, and eigenvalues are always solutions of the null space of the equation A minus lambda I.